Hey guys, Spudknocker here, as always, and today I wanted to take a look at the AIM-9 X-Ray, uh, as it's represented here in DCS World on both the FA-18C and F-16C uh, modules within DCS World. Now, a lot of you guys may know that uh, the AIM-9X has a lot more capability than the rest of the Sidewinder family, and that is due to its imaging sensor within the seeker head of the missile, which actually uh, takes snapshots and sees the object that it's tracking and compares that object to a database housed within the missile's computer system to allow it to track a target and not be spoofed by flares. Now, of course, this doesn't always work in practice because as we saw with the F-A-18E that engaged uh, an Su-22 fitter from the Syrian Air Force a few years ago, the missile is still able to be spoofed by flares, but it of course does a lot better in this uh, regime than uh, any other of the Sidewinder family. And so because of that, the A-9 X-Ray also has a slight air-to-ground capability to it to be able to lock on to uh, vehicles on the ground, and even its most uh, prominent air-to-ground capability being the ability to lock on to small, fast-moving objects on water, uh, namely uh, Boghammers, as used by the uh, Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps here in the Strait of Hormuz, and other things like that. Of course, the AIM-9X is also capable of engaging low-flying cruise missiles, and so I figured, why don't we test and see what we can do with it here in DCS world. And so we'll go ahead and try to shoot down some SAMs, we'll try to shoot a tank on the ground, and we'll try to shoot some boats on the water. And then after that, why don't we go ahead and uh, try and shoot down an air-to-air -air missile. Now I have seen air-to-air -air missiles engage each other in DCS World before, but I think it kind of comes up as more or less a fluke, uh, but uh, we'll see if we can actually purposefully shoot down an air-to-air -air missile with an aimline X-ray. And we'll also talk about whether or not if we can, in, in fact, shoot down SAMs and air-to-air -air missiles and shoot at boats and shoot at tanks with AIM-9s, we'll talk about if this is a viable tactic or not, because there are, while it is pretty darn cool to be able to defend yourself by shooting a missile at a SAM, it may not be a viable tactic in the dynamic environment that is engaging in combat with a fighter jet uh, in uh, non-permissive airspace. So, let's go ahead and get started with the video. Alrighty guys, we'll go ahead and get rolling with this test here. First thing we're going to do is of course go into dogfight mode. And of course change our aim 9 xs to the boresight mode and turn on our helmet mounted display. And now we're able to slew around the seeker head of our aim 9 xs Now we do have six aim 9 xs loaded onto our Viper on the external stores here. And we have an SA-6 SAM site set up out in front of us here. Uh, with two launchers for a total of six missiles. So hopefully we'll be able to uh, splash all of those missiles with our six sidewinders here. But we'll see how it goes. And like I said earlier, we'll go ahead and after this test, we'll talk about whether or not this would be a viable tactic in your multiplayer or single player uh, experiences in DCS world. So we're just cruising along here. So one thing that's very interesting about the AIM-9X is it's not just a heat-seeking missile. It actually has an imaging sensor in the seeker head of the missile, and it has a database in the computer system within the missile itself that compares the image that it's seeing against that database of images and things that's stored within the missile to allow for better tracking of, say, if it sees an F4 or it sees a... Uh, MiG-29. It can see that image, recognize that that is a MiG-29, and follow it, not just based on the heat seeking, but also on the imagery that the seeker head of the weapon collects as well, which uh, is extremely interesting, uh, in my opinion. Alright, so that SAM system is now locking us up. It should be right around in this area out here, so we'll uh, keep an eye on that. come in towards the SAM system just a little bit, not too much. Alright, looks like we got a SAM launch and we can see the uh, smoke from that SAM launch out there. And we'll start trying to get that missile to lock onto the SAM. Here it comes. 
Alright. Come on. Come on. Alright, there we go. And splash one SA6. Alright, here comes another missile. Alright, here comes this other one. Let's see if we can get it to lock up again. Come on, come on, it's getting close. Alright, Fox 2 again, and Splash again. Here comes another missile. As we're getting closer and closer to the SAM site, we're getting more and more of a high off bore sight angle. Come on. Getting close. Alright, Fox 2 again, and Splash. Alright, we're getting a little too high off the bore sight angle, so we'll come angle in towards the SAM site just slightly. Come on. Alright, Fox 2 again. And splash another. <laughs> and here comes another SAM. Let's see, can we do it again? Come on. Oh boy. Here we go. This, one, this one's gonna be tough. Oh, come on. Come on, come on, come on. There we go. And that's all she wrote. <laughs> we are now out of missiles, and the SAM site is now out of missiles as well. So, let's talk about, is this a viable tactic in a multiplayer server, or within uh, co-op missions, or even in single player, if you're playing your own mission you've made, or campaign that maybe you've downloaded and I would go ahead and hazard to say that no it is not a viable tactic and it is very very cool and very cool little gimmick to kind of do that uh, as a demonstration for a video or for you to just go ahead and hop into a server and put in a SAM site and uh, go ahead and try it out for yourself but in a more dynamic uh, scenario in which we don't have just a very sterile environment like we do here with just one of us being an F-16 and one SAM site down there it's going to be incredibly, incredibly difficult to pull that off when you have, say, enemy fighters coming at you as well. You've got multiple different RWR contacts coming at Batcha. You've got uh, multiple SAM sites potentially engaging you. You know, different types of SAMs, all these different things that really, really make it more confused. As you can see there, I was really having to look at that missile and concentrate pretty, pretty hard, or else I would have um, potentially not locked up that missile in time and not been able to shoot off the Fox 2 and hit that missile before it hit me. Um, and as you guys could see, those SAMs got pretty darn close. That was a little bit too close for comfort. Now if I were in a flying a mission with uh, Spuds Buds or something like that, I would be very, very, very uncomfortable with how close those SAMs got. And so you also have to take into effect, well, if I'm flying as a strike fighter, which is usually the role that the F-16 is thrust into, a nice little bomb truck, you are probably going to be carrying a bunch of bombs and all these things and a targeting pod and all that kind of good stuff. So you're probably only going to have two Sidewinders on your jet. That's kind of a standard loadout for the F-16. And so that SA-6 site down there only had two launchers, but it still had six missiles coming up at you. So after you expend those two Fox 2s that you have on board, um, you're now kind of, uh, you're kind of sunk in terms of being able to defend yourself more as you get closer and closer to that SA-6 uh, or whatever SAM site that is. So keep that in mind, as well as the fact that if you get rid of those two AIM-9Xs uh, that you have on your F-16 uh, in a usual mission format, you are now unable to defend yourself at close range from air threats. So say a MiG sneaks up on you or a Sukhoi or something like that. And so uh, you'd just be relying on the AIM-120s that you probably have on the uh, inboard uh, stations out there, or middle stations on your wings. So it's uh, not the most viable tactic in the world, I don't think anyway, and I don't think that uh, any Air Force in the world would actually teach that in the real world as a way to defend yourself against a SAM. 
Now, say you're flying F-18 off the deck of a carrier and you've got uh, an anti-ship cruise missile coming at your carrier. By all means, it's probably a very good tactic to use that AIM-9X to engage that cruise missile and down it. And in fact, that is one of the requirements for the AIM-9X when the requirement for the new version of the uh, Sidewinder came out was the ability to engage low-flying cruise missiles. Now, the second test we'll do here is we'll actually try firing AIM-9Xs at ground targets. Now, this will be a more interesting test because I kind of figured that we would be able to lock on the SAMs and engage those SAMs with the AIM-9X. Um, but uh, in DCS world, I don't think that we'll be able to actually lock on to ground targets because I don't think the IR system is set up in DCS world or coded correctly uh, to allow for an air-to-air -air missile to engage and lock on to a ground target. However, in real life, the AIM-9X actually does have a latent air-to-ground capability that is heightened by the imaging sensor. So if the imaging sensor sees a hot spot on the ground then identifies that hot spot as being a T-72 or something like that, it will in fact lock onto that target and the pilot flying can engage, say, a tank on the ground with a sidewinder. So in history, we see a couple different instances of sidewinders being used in the air-to-ground role. Um, most uh, stereotypically and most prevalent use of this missile in the air-to-ground role is seen during the tanker war between Iran, Kuwait, and the U.S., uh, where the Iranians were incredibly low on their stocks of air-to-ground weaponry, rockets, bombs, uh, Maverick missiles, things like that. So Iranian F-4 pilots actually used uh, AIM-9 Sidewinders. The versions they have are usually AIM-9 Papas or uh, uh, earlier versions than that. And so they would uh, swoop down on tankers and salvo off their Sidewinders unable to lock onto them, of course, with those earlier Sidewinder variants, but uh, engage those tankers. And because you don't need that big of a warhead to set a tanker full of crude oil ablaze, they did their job pretty darn efficiently. And it's actually quite an interesting uh, little story. So if you're interested, I definitely, definitely recommend looking that up. Uh, the I guess you could just Google Iranian pilots using Sidewinders against uh, tankers, things like that. Um, when it comes to the AIM-9X's air-to-ground capability, you're probably going to more or less likely use the AIM-9X in a real-world situation against, say, a fast-moving boat skimming across the water, because uh, like a Boghammer in the uh, Strait of Hormuz, something like that, where there's going to be a very nice uh, difference between the temperature of the water surface and the engine heat from the engine of that fast boat as well as it's a very, very, very soft target. So that's gonna allow that AIM-9X with that very, very small warhead relatively to actually shred that target um, and disable it or destroy it. Um, our example that I used earlier of say an AIM-9X going after a T-72, there's just gonna be a loud clang against the side of that tank and the tanker is gonna be like, what the hell was that? You know, And it's not gonna affect them in any way other than potentially like perforating some fuel tanks that they may have on the outside of the, of the tank or you know, putting some holes in their camping gear and their sleeping bags. So uh, let's go ahead and move on to that. First test we're gonna do is we're going to run a test against some tanks on the ground here in the desert of the NTTR. Then we'll go over and hop into the Strait of Hormuz and uh, try and engage some bog hammers and see if that uh, works for us. I doubt here that DCS World is coded correctly to allow this to happen, but I think it's worth a test and uh, could be kind of entertaining for you guys at home. Alrighty, fellas. So here we are back on the NTTR, and we've set conditions to be as favorable as possible. Not much wind in the mission, as well as we have the temperature turned down all the way to zero degrees Celsius. It's a very, very chilly winter day here in the high desert of Nevada. So we'll go ahead and enter into dogfight mode, and we'll go ahead and bring her into boresight mode again, and we'll get our joint helmet mounted queuing system all ready to go, which I guess I already did before I started the video. <laughs> So we'll go ahead and come on down. Our tanks that we set up as targets should be around here somewhere. Yeah, they should show up as uh, little dots down there. And there they are. They're kind of rolling pretty quick in a bit of a convoy-esque uh, formation. Now, like I said, I don't believe that this is going to work, but it's worth a try just for your uh, giggles. Okay, so now... Thankfully for the little dot labels, we do have a bead on those tanks down there. And we'll go ahead and just keep the seeker head 
on that target. And we'll keep trying to get the uh, secret head to lock on. Like I said, I don't believe this is going to work, but uh, we'll try it anyway. down the cage on cage button and so far nothing 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 and I mean this is kind of what we expected here now we're pretty much within range of what we were engaging those Sams at oh now they're shooting at me awesome and that's gonna be a no-go for that all right, that's kind of what we figured would happen, but that's all right. And we'll go ahead and move on to our next test, which is, of course, uh, firing AIM-9Xs at their truly kind of more intended target for their uh, air-to-ground capability, uh, latent air-to-ground capability in the real missile, and that is engaging fast boats on the water. So let's go ahead and uh, hop on over to that. All righty, guys, here we go for our third test with the AIM-9X, and that is, of course, the more or less intended target of that latent air-to-ground capability of the AIM-9X ray. So let's go ahead and hop in the office and get started. All right, we already got our uh, joint helmet mounted queuing system all set up and ready to go, and we'll go ahead and just throw in a dogfight mode and bring up the bore sight uh, setting for the AIM-9X to allow us to slew the seeker head around with our head. We've got no wind over the surface of the water just to aid us with uh, seeing and attacking those boats as much as possible. We do have, of course, some usual Persian Gulf haze going on around us, but uh, man, even at 12 noon, DCS World just looks so much better with that uh, 2.5.6 update. It really just makes things look a lot more interesting. So, we can see through these dot labels our Boghamars out there out in front of us. They are cruising along at a brisk 40 knots. Now keep in mind, in my last video, that wasn't a mission video, we did discuss about how uh, surfaces like glassy water can be incredibly difficult to judge altitude at. So it's incredibly important for you guys to listen to Betty and listen to and um, you know watch out for your altitude that you have here on your HUD. You can't judge it very well like for me right now I really can't tell at least in game it might be different for you guys on YouTube whether I'm at you know 10,000 feet or 200 feet it's very difficult to tell well that might be a little bit of an exaggeration but you guys kind of get the idea so we're still a little bit ways out I'm gonna offset to the left here just a little bit more there's a little tanker hanging out in the Gulf or really the Straits of Hormuz here the Gulf is further to our west and we are trying to acquire those targets already. We'll slow it down just a little bit, so that way we can give ourselves the best chance possible. Like I said before with those tanks, I don't think that DCS is coded to allow this to work, but it would be interesting if they did update it. Could be wrong here. Let's see how it works. Oh, we're getting into the soup now. So we can see it turn orange. I think it's still a little bit too orange, in my opinion, but that's neither here nor there. Alright, we're still trying to lock them up. Not quite working for us. Really isn't uh, a surprise, like I said, but it would be cool if it did work. And that is not going to work. All right. So that's another test down. And so while I've been doing these tests, I've also come up with a quick fourth test. We're going to see if we can shoot down an air-to-air -air missile with an AIM-9X that's coming at, uh, at us. And so uh, stay tuned in just a moment for that. 
Alrighty, fellas, welcome back to this third or fourth test with the AIM-9X and what it can do in DCS World. And right now we've got, uh, we're just flying over the street of Hormuz here, and we've got a MiG-29 out there uh, flying an intercept vector on us. Now the loadout that this MiG-29 has is just a single uh, R-27R uh, missile that he's going to fire at us, and I wanted to, of course, make this as sterile as possible, just one missile coming at us, so that way we can uh, really concentrate on locking that missile up and firing a FOX-2 with an AIM-9 X-ray at it and hopefully knocking it out of the sky before it has a chance to hit us. Now, um, I have seen air-to-air -air missiles in DCS World engage each other before, and I more or less thought that was a fluke, and so I guess we'll go ahead and see whether or not uh, it is a viable tactic here in DCS World, and uh, whether or not you could potentially use that in a real engagement in a multiplayer server, or of course uh, in single player as well. So let's go ahead and pop into the office once again and get started. So very quickly we'll set up the cockpit with what we need. All right. So we'll kind of angle out over here a little bit more just to give the missile as best of a chance as possible. I don't want to have it at a completely and totally like 90 degree Hobbs angle. All right, so we've got that MiG-29 out there. He's roughly at about our 11, 11, 10 o'clock-ish. Keep in mind that the RWR indications aren't always perfect, especially as you rotate and maneuver the airplane around. But it should be more or less out here. Hopefully he engages us soon. Let's go ahead and take a look at him. Yep, he's definitely coming at us. And now he's locking us up. Perfect. Oh, there he is. Just a nice little dot out there. Alright, so I'm not going to lock him. I'm going to wait until we see a missile come off the rail. There we go, here comes a missile. And we're looking to lock this missile, not the MiG-29. We're trying to lock him up here. And Fox 2. And Splash 1 R-27. All right, well, that's interesting. And Fox 2 on that MiG-29. And Splash. Also something that's really interesting to note here that I don't know if this is a, a result of the lighting or whatnot, but uh, it seems that our missiles have quite a bigger smoke trail here on the Persian Gulf map than they did on the NTTR. So, I don't know if that's some strange thing within DCS World, or if it has to do with the lighting or whatnot, but kind of interesting. So, we just splash that R-27, and we splash that MiG-29. Now, in my opinion, I think this is uh, probably a little bit more viable uh, than engaging SAMs, but in in the long run, I still think that it isn't the best tactic that you can do. I think old-fashioned tactics for evading uh, BVR shots as well as evading SAMs are going to be your best friend. And to come away from this, I think that DCS World is just not coded correctly. Uh, well, correctly is the wrong statement. It's not coded to allow for air-to-air -air missiles to lock up ground targets. Uh, I'm not a computer programmer, but that would be my uh, educated guess as to how stuff works within DCS World and, and things like that. It would be interesting if Eagle Dynamics did uh, kind of allow the AIM-9X to have that kind of latent air-to-ground capability, but uh, I'm sure that that would be far, far low on their list of priorities, and I would hope it would be because there's some other cool stuff that's in the pipeline that I would like to see uh, much, much more before um, I would like to see this implemented. So uh, I hope you guys kind of liked the video. I hope you guys maybe learned something about the AIM-9X, ray, right? And I hope you guys... Uh, Get some ideas as to kind of some cool stuff you can pull off with the AIM-9X, um, potentially. So, maybe in the next video we'll test whether or not we can use unguided uh, missiles in order to damage ships. Uh, because that might be something kind of interesting as a way to kind of test that old idea of the IRI-AF using uh, sidewinders against uh, oil tankers. And maybe that can potentially be 
uh, used in DCS world to some extent. So I hope you guys liked the video. Please give it a like and a subscribe, and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one.